Hi divers, welcome to finally another video. In this video I show you the 10 essential knots I think every diver should know coming up. From tying a boat to making a leash for stages or a DPV to attaching bolt snaps if we use line or ropes, knowing some knots is essential. There are numerous knots that can come in handy during dive trips and I cannot cover them all apart from the fact that I do not know them all, but with these 10 knots I think you can cover most of the situations you come across as a diver. On this channel I do instructional videos like this one, but also gear reviews and vlogs, so consider subscribing if you find this useful. The first one is probably the simple snot and this is used in diving to fasten a ball snap on a hose or backup light for instance or on the leash to clip your stages. If you want to know how to tie a ball snap, just check out my video link above. Anyway, the most important rule to remember for this knot is right over left and left over right. Right over left, crossing, and left over right, crossing. Now this knot connects two ropes very, very strongly. If you don't follow this rule, and for instance, you do right over left, and again right over left, you get something like this. And you see if I pull, this unties very easily. The second one is the bowline knot. It's one of the best known knots for sailors and I think most divers know this knot already. To tie this knot you first make this small loop, making sure your working end goes over the standing end. Now you can wrap the working end around anything you'd like to tie, like a pole or whatever. Now the working end came from underneath through the loop, goes from the left to the right underneath the working end, sorry the standing end, through the loop again, like this. If you pull, you see you get a really nice and very very strong knot. This one is one of the most useful knots because it does not constrict. It is very strong, but it unties relatively easy. If you turn it around and you pull the standing end back like this, you see it unties very, very easily. There are two easy and quick ways to tie the bowline knot. For the first one, you have your rope around a pole or whatever. Now you form a loop again with the fingers inside, just turn your hand, so that this end comes on top. Now grab the rope, like this, and the other end is fed just through this loop that I created here, like this. And if I pull everything now, you see, there's again the bowline knot. Another quick version, especially if you want to tie the rope around your body or on a pole that's facing away from you, um, you can just do it like this. So you see it's a very quick version. Now slowly and step by step. 
You hold the working end in your right hand and the standing end that goes, for example, to a boat or something, in the left. With your right hand, you go over the standing end, like this. Turn your right hand, just like this. Now you're ending up here. Now, the working end goes underneath the standing end and comes back and with some exercise you can really do it with one hand and really quickly. Now the working end is pulled through the loop that was around your wrist like this. If the loop does not slide off the wrist help it a bit like this and you're done. The figure 8 is a simple knot that prevents a piece of rope or line from sliding through a hole for instance. It's very very easy to tie. Just create a loop like this. The working end goes around the standing end and comes back through the loop. And now you created the 8. And as you can see, if this slides through a hole or something narrow, the line is just stopped. The double figure eight is a very strong knot to tie heavy loads for instance, or maybe to tie yourself to a climbing harness, which is very useful, especially in cave diving. It's very secure, but sometimes, especially when it was under strong tension or when it became wet, it can be hard to untie. Anyway, this is a useful knot and it's pretty easy to tie. First, we do again the figure eight and make sure that the working end is long enough. Wrap the working end around something uh, you would like to tie and now follow the eight just back. I'm going in here. Now it goes in this way and I'm just following the eight. Just back. And then I just pull everything and it becomes a very tight and secure knot. Make sure the remaining end is long enough, at least one hand length or more, so you see uh, for climbing or something this is too short. And if you want to be extra secure when you tie a person for instance, uh, you can just make another half hitch on top of that. See this is really short, but you can just make another half hitch so it secures this knot even more. The butterfly knot is used to create a non-sliding, non-constricting loop or a series of non-sliding, non-constricting loops in the middle of a rope. And this is often used to create a rope with multiple loops where you can clip stages and scooters so you can easily lift everything into the boat or just have it hanging under the boat. To tie this one, wrap the rope three times around your hand, like this. Now grab the middle one from underneath, pull it a bit, bring it back and feed it under again, like this. Or you can pull everything, make it tight. Now you really have a nice loop in the middle of the rope that does not slide and that does not constrict where you can clip just where you can just clip any stages or anything too. The 
welded sheet band is used to connect two ropes to each other and is very useful if you have two short ropes but need a long one for instance, especially if the ropes have different diameters. To tie this one, take one of the ropes and create a simple loop like this. Now the other rope comes from underneath wraps around the loop and goes back in between itself and the other rope like this. If you have it like this, you can now pull everything and you see both ropes are easily connected. next one is the taut unhitch and this knot is used mostly for the leash on the DPV. It's pretty easy however with thick ropes like this one you have to pull it really tightly. You feed the leash to the anchor point of the DPV and now the working end goes under the standing end. You wrap it around once or if you like, you could create more, more rounds around the standing end. Uh, but to show it, I just do it once. And now with the working end, you go through this loop. And now I basically create a half hitch on this side of the knot. So I go under the rope. like this. Now let's pull everything. And if you have it really tight, then you can slide this knot along your, uh, your standing end. That means you can adjust the length of your leash for your DPV, but if you pull the trigger, this knot on the, the rope gets some tension, you see it doesn't slide anymore. So under tension it's really locked and if there's no tension you can just slide it. Very beautiful. The claw hitch makes it possible to uh, tie something to a pole, for instance, and adjust the length afterwards. This is often used to tie up boats, but as well to tie tanks to railing, so they don't come off and fall down during boat rides, for instance. To tie this, you create a cross around the railing, for instance. Go from the lower right to the upper left, around the pole and then from the lower left to the upper right. Around again. So you have basically a cross or an X and now you feed the working end underneath the X or on this side and this is the claw fetch. And if you would like to tie up tanks uh, on a boat, on a railing or something, you can just use your rope and make another claw hitch on the other side. Just like this. So I can have I can have my tanks here. And if I want like to get a little bit more tension on the line to really tie up the tanks to the railing. I can just pull this through. And now it's shorter and my tanks are really, really pulled really tightly to the railing. And if I would like to make it super secure so this don't uh, this doesn't go off easily. 
I create another half hitch on this side maybe. So I have this loop here, feed it inside this loop. So this makes um, the knot a little bit more secure. Another version of the cloth hitch, if you have access to the end of a pole, like in this situation, you create a loop like this and another loop like this. Now you bring the right loop behind the left loop. And now you can throw this over your pole like this and we pull the knot and ta-da, we have the clawfish. Last but not least, another variation of the clawfish, the constrictor knot. This one is really useful since it constricts really tightly. You start similar to the claw hitch by creating an X. Just like this. But instead of feeding it directly underneath the X, like in the claw hitch, you feed it between these both ropes and then underneath this rope and then you can pull it and it constricts really really tightly actually the constrictor knot is so tight uh, that it may replace even a zip tie or a hose clamp a downside is that sometimes if it's really tight you can just cut it away with a knife to remove it. There are many more knots and many more versions of these knots, so please leave me a comment if you think I missed something or if you have some cool trick to tie a knot. Subscribe to my channel and don't forget to activate the bell and never miss other useful videos like these. See you there.